It's Foo's Day. We got the Pretender for Grundy. And also, I would like to extend a woolly mammoth-sized amount of thanks to Eris and Brian Rutledge for signing up for the Patreon supporter of the Cause Club, Eris and Brian. Thank you for your support. And if you would like to find out what's going on there, the link, of course, will be in the description. We're gonna take this intro riff in tiny segments because it's a little bit confusing. Take your pinky finger and put it on the B string 10th fret, your middle finger goes on the G string 9th fret, and your ring finger goes on the D string 10th fret. This is kind of a tricky shape, but once you get here, these fingers aren't gonna move for the entirety of the intro riff. Your pointer finger is gonna play twister and make its way around, but it's gonna start on the baby E string 7th fret, and you're going to pluck from the open A string, down and then back up, but stop at the D string. Then you pluck your open A string immediately followed by the E string 7th fret. This is where your pointer finger starts to get busy and this two bass notes in a row thing really makes it feel like the rhythm's done a double backwards jackknife at you and it has. So open A, E7. Then, strum the rest of your chord, E8, strum, open A, strum. So, and in context, then the whole thing negates its double backwards jackknife by landing on the A string 9th fret and hanging there for a moment before you pluck down D, G, B, and immediately after that B, you're gonna pluck the A string twice, but the second time you're gonna give it a bend, before you fall down to the eighth fret and pluck just like we did at the very beginning, all the way to the E string, and then back to the D string, so. And the whole thing. Notice I bend up on that A string bend. There's no room to bend down. Your own fingers are in the way. And the very last time, string a little flick as we go into the verse. This whole song was a thrill to pick through. There were quite a few things that were different from what I thought they were. For instance, I thought this part was on the B string, working its way up the neck, and there's even an interview with Dave Grohl where he does that, but that's not what Chris Shiflett does. Chris Shiflett puts his ring finger on the B string fifth fret, and you're strumming the B and the baby E string, open of course. Then the E string is gonna go two open with your pointer finger, three open, and five open with your pinky finger. And the second time and the fourth time, the even number times, you're just gonna hang on that five five for the whole beat. But of course, Dave's part is A minor twice, followed by the better man chord, D with an F sharp in the bass, E string 2nd fret, G string 2nd fret, B string 3rd fret, same rhythm, and just once, followed by a big F chord, but don't bar it, because we don't want to hear the B or the E strings there, you see Dave play it as even just a two finger power chord, but I do believe I hear the major 3rd in the studio recording, but that doesn't matter, play a power chord if you want. And when we repeat, we're going to add a G after the F. Real quick. When it starts to chug, you're going to keep your accents. 
but add the chugs in between. <laughs> Last time, after the quick G, you're gonna hit a D and let it ring out for same old story. And octaves roar over that same old story too. They're gonna be octave chords starting at D, that's the A string fifth fret and the G string seventh fret. E, two frets higher than that. F sharp, two frets higher than that. And G, one fret higher than that. Chorus. The chorus is cool because Dave now takes over and plays the intro but all strummed out instead of fancy plucking. While Chris hangs on an A power chord, that's the E string fifth fret. And then he's going to mimic Dave's walking bass line, but with octave chords, so... B, that's the E string 7th fret, and the D string 9th fret. It's the same shape as these octave chords, but now we're starting on the E string, so both strings move up one string towards the ceiling. A power chord, B octave chord, C octave chord, one fret higher than that, back down to A, but as an octave chord, not a power chord now. And then this really awesome chord, it's a different way to play D with an F sharp in the bass, E string 2nd fret, A string 5th fret, before he falls to a regular old F power chord. So we got... And the exit from the chorus is going to be an open A string ringing out while the D string moves. Two, four, five, seven. And that's how the bridge starts too. If we start counting from where he starts singing, you're going to do that eight times. so on, but after the 8, you're going to switch to the D string is going to go 10, 9, 7, 5, and you're going to do that four times. And then it's going to move even higher. The D string is going to go 12, 10, 9, 7, and I thought I heard him go 12, 10, 9, 10 a few times too, so... When it gets to who are you and things escalate even further, all signs point to Chris playing single notes now, and I can't tell you what position he's in because there were no videos of him during that spot, more specific than just kind of up around here-ish. Uh, but the notes are D14, G12, G14, and land on D12. I don't know why, but I like to play it here instead, G9, up to 12, B10 and land on D12. It sounds to me like the strings in that part are thinner strings rather than fatter strings, but it doesn't matter. They're all the same notes. And during that part, there's also a power chord A guitar. Ringing out, so that'd be fun to do. And the bass joins in with A, C, D, G, harmonizing with Chris's notes. And I can't tell you if a guitar does that too, but that'd be a fun thing to do anyways. E string 5th fret, A string 3rd fret, 5th fret, land on the E string 3rd fret. But along those lines, you could play an A power chord up to a C octave chord on the A string 3rd fret, and a D octave chord on the A string 5th fret. That'd be fun. I'm gonna keep musing about that part for a second. If you don't mind, maybe Chris is still doing the open A string thing with the D string moving around. I don't think so, but maybe. In which case, it'd be D14, 17, 19, down to 12. It's kind of challenging. You could get this harmony with these notes if you played little power chords here. D string 7th fret, G string 9th fret. Move it up 3 frets, up 2 more frets, and down to 5 and 7. 
also kind of difficult, but worth considering. When the final, the last chorus gets really, really, really big, Chris has a really cool harmony that he does, again, with octave chords on the A string, but let's start out with an A chord. Open A string, D7, G9, B10, mute your low E string so you can strum away. And then moving into our harmony, our ring finger's right in the right spot. We just need to add the A string seventh fret, and we are going to go seven, nine, ten, seven, nine, seven, nine, ten. I really wanted him to go seven, nine, eight, but he didn't. He went seven, nine, ten, but you should go seven, nine, eight if you want, but I'll do it right one time for you here. You do the low one four times. And then you do the 10, 9, 7, 5, 1 twice. And you end it on A power chord. And that's it. That's how you play the pretender. That's my best swipe at it anyways. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful. And I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.